it's triple x with machinemasters.com here with another tutorial for you guys except this time it's the npc renaissance baby over the next several weeks and months we're going to be rolling out a bunch more tutorials uh definitely still with the machine but also adding ableton push uh ag is going to be showing you guys some of that stuff and also the npc renaissance i'm going to be showing you guys some stuff in there as well so uh definitely look forward to all that stuff and uh, if you guys haven't seen yet, definitely you want to go grab that Machine Masters expansion kit. You can only get it through the drumbroker.com by purchasing the machine flash drive. So I, I strongly suggest you go do that. There's some dope content on there. Plus, who wouldn't want a flash drive of a machine if you're a machine user? That's just dope. So, But anyway, let's get right to it, man. Uh, this is going to be a basic tutorial geared towards you cats that just got home with your NPC Renaissance. Uh, you know, you got it wired up. You install the driver, the software, all the expansions, 809, the wub, the bank, the noise, all that junk. And now you kind of want to figure out how to get sounds on the pad, start sequencing something, you know, and, and getting to it, getting to work. So let's start off with the browser. The first thing you'll notice up here is you've got these, these numbers up here, one through five. These are going to be like favorites, if you will, or like default paths that you want to get to quickly. Okay, so on mine, you'll notice that one and three are both lit up. Um, this kind of stumped me for like a split second when I first got my REN, so I want to cover that for you guys. Uh, basically, if you've got the same path assigned to these numbers, then both of them will light up. So let's fix that. First and foremost, number one, I want to be my sample kits, like all my sounds, all my drums and stuff. So I'm going to navigate to that by hitting this drop down menu. I know that's on E for me on my DAW drive. And then this folder right here, new sample kits, is what I want number one to default to. So all I'm going to do is drag it up to number one and now boom it'll show the contents of the or the internal contents of this folder and when i click one that's what i get you'll also notice that number three is not highlighted anymore because it's its own path it don't have a duplicate path like number three number one were both desktop and now they're not so now i want to fix number three and make that the path that i want it to be which is going to be daw drive and samples so let's drag that up there now I got one is my sample kits. Break beats is number two. Number three is samples. And for four and five, just for quick access, uh, I got my programs and MPC RAM folder and my projects. So let's say now we want to uh, start navigating uh, the browser. The first thing you're going to realize, obviously, is you got a bunch of folders, a, a bunch of paths and stuff in here. But uh, each folder is going to have different file types. And we can basically use... Uh, these filters to uh, filter each category and look at only what we want. So let's say if I come down to, uh, I'm going to come over here and go to this joint right here, projects, 100 kits and running. Inside of here, I've got all kinds of different file types. So I can filter what I'm seeing on, on the browser screen by clicking these different filters here. So if I hit sample, I'm only going to see my samples, right? If I click program, I'm only going to see programs. No samples, nothing else, just programs. I click sequence. I see I got a sequence there and project. There's no project in this folder. The project data is actually one level up right here. So that's how you're going to use those basically to, uh, you know, be specific about what kind of files you're looking for, especially if you have, uh, if you're not real organized and you don't have a good uh, drive structure, you know, you kind of just throw everything into one folder or maybe everything's in your downloads folder uh, you know, this is a real good way to kind of separate what it is that you're looking for to find stuff faster. Now, in terms of how to do this on the hardware, it's also very, very simple. Uh, I'm gonna just pull up this little picture, show y'all the right side of the NPC ran. Uh, you can see in this data select area right here, you've got project sequence program sample and no filter. Same as up here. So if you single click any of those, they will highlight. Now, it's worth mentioning that on the Renaissance hardware, uh, if you look at a button and it's got orange text underneath it, that means it's got a secondary function. And typically, to activate those secondary functions, um, you just double-click the button, and that's how you access them. However, for some reason, uh, Akai has decided with the data select only to uh, access those uh, secondary functions in the data select area by using Shift and clicking the button. So you cannot double-click on project folder one to access the folder one option the same way you can double click on program edit to access the queue link function again main function secondary function typically you can double click on these to access the secondary function 
single click for the primary function, but for whatever reason, the Kai left that out on data select. I'm not sure why. Maybe somebody could tell me nonetheless. So moving along now, uh, like I said, if you want to uh, pick a specific uh, filter, I'm sorry, a uh, folder, then you would just hold shift and click and it'll go to that folder. If you want to filter a certain way, then you just regular click single and you can access any of those. So that's basically it for this first part of the tutorial. Like uh, you got an idea of how to use these locations. Now you got an idea how to filter everything out uh, in part two of this tutorial. Uh, I'm going to come back and show you how to actually get into uh, finding the sounds, sorting through them using what we learned in part one, but then uh, applying that to getting sounds on the pads uh, and some different options that you have where that's concerned. And then we'll throw together a quick little sequence or something uh, so you guys can get an idea how that goes too. Like I said, just real basic stuff, but uh, you know, necessary. So uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you spread the word. Uh, let other cats know about these tutorials so uh, they can benefit as well. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and be sure to catch part two of this tutorial. And I'll see you guys on the flip side. All right, triple X, machine masters.com. I'm out. Peace.